Let's have a look at text basics in Affinity Designer for iPad. This is the beginner's guide series. So let's open to Affinity Designer and create a new file. It can be anything you like. I've just got a um, probably a photo background on there and reduced in size slightly so I can see it on the canvas. Select the text tool and I've selected art text there and type in your text. We're just going to start with that. Now is the time. You can click and drag the little blue dots to resize your text. So if you um, put your Apple Pencil on one of the blue dots or your finger if you've got small enough fingers and you can drag out the size of the text, enlarge or reduce, uh, lengthen it, shorten it. You can even tip it on its side with the little dot that's pointing upwards in the middle. If you drag that, you will tip the, ver tip the, um, the line of text off the horizontal. You can also resize the text with the context toolbar. Highlight your text first, as you can see there, and that will bring up the context toolbar down the bottom. And you can see the text font is aerial, it's regular, and it's 42.2 point size, um, aligned left. To change your text, click on the character icon in the studio toolbar. That's the character studio. A new panel will appear and you can see again in there you've got Arial 42.2 point regular. Um, the text is black and you can alter all sorts of other things there as well, which is really interesting. I'd encourage you to experiment with some of these because they do have some importance in the in your design in the future. You can adjust the size of the text horizontally under positioning. Drag out the horizontal scale and I've got it to 126 there. If you compare that with the previous one, you'll see that it's slightly larger, slightly longer across the screen. Now I've centered it all and moved the canvas across to the left a bit and reduced it in size, but that's all right. You can adjust the text vertically. So I've increased the vertical scale to 286, which is nearly double the size of the text. You can adjust the space between each letter, and that's called tracking. Normally set to zero, which is the default, I've now got 60%. So the amount of space between each letter has been considerably increased. Sometimes if you've got a narrow font like this one, it makes it easier to read. But be careful not to, not to set the tracking too high, otherwise the letters are so far apart, <laughs> you still can't read them. You can adjust the space between each line of text. Now I've only got one line there, but you can see I've moved it to 0.875 of an inch above the baseline. And that's actually moved that whole line of text up. And you can, can possibly see that the baseline would have been a lot lower than that. Now, you can also change the text color. Now that's fairly easy. You just tap on the color wheel and select the color you want. You can also add a background color. <clears throat> but with Affinity Designer for iPad, you need to add a colored layer and put it behind the text. The desktop version allows you to set the text background color from the options menu, but iPad does not yet have that option. So what I've done there, you can see there's a layer, which initially when you input it, when you, when you set a new layer with the rectangle, it puts it above the text, now is the time, and blocks it out but you just slide it down below the text, so it's behind the text, and I've changed it to that purpley colour. So I now have a, a coloured banner, if you like, behind the text. It's quite straightforward. If you like, group your text and colour layer for better control. You can see I've created a group out of them. So if you want to change one, you can change both by just selecting that group. At the top of the panel, you can change your font and style. Now I've gone up to the text panel there. We're still on the text panel 
the text studio at the right and I've selected Glory Hallelujah for a text. Now, isn't that a nice text? 41.6 point and regular and nothing else. You can also make your text into a vector graphic. Click on the command tool. A drop down box will appear and select convert to curves. Converting it to curves actually creates it a vector file, transfers it to a vector file. Now, if you have a look carefully at the next panel, you can see that every letter in that group that's selected there has been changed to a curve. So each letter is a vector graphic. Once converted to curves, the text will be grouped into the layer as individual letters so you can adjust each letter. This gives you a great deal of design control. And you can see there in this last slide, select the letter that you want to work on and then the node tool and the vector points will appear. You can see all the little points around that letter. At this point, you can change the shape of your letter by moving the vector points. You simply drag one or more of those points outwards, inwards, sideways, whatever you do, want to do with them, and that will alter the shape of that letter. Now, you may not want to ruin your lovely font, Glory Hallelujah font, but you may have other designs where this applies. You may have letters that you want to adjust each letter to fit your design model. And that's how you do it. Thank you for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like, simply hitting the button on the YouTube area where you're watching this video. And if you lose it, that's my YouTube channel address where you can click on subscribe and like right here on the channel.